and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you live from Hungary. I hope everybody is having a safe and healthy week so far. I hope you're all doing well. In this class, we are looking at a reading section, passage three, continuing in the same exam from our previous class. Hi, Michael Fan. Hi, Maksud. Hi, Musafir. High five, Musafir. Uh, nice to see our members and nice to see our regular students. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Zatillo. Hi, Flower Sun. Uh, this uh, lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS help. Check us out there. And for the general version of the exam, check us out at gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have loads and loads of materials to help you. Uh, this is the academic version of our website here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join the premium package. Get access to our HD video lessons, ad-free, of course, as well as practice exams, interactive courses. The same idea for the general green background. Click that big red button to join us there. Hi, Sammy, Rocky. Good to see more of our regular students in the class. Uh, students, if you have questions, don't be shy. Just send me an email, Adrian at aehelp.com. I'll happily answer as soon as I can. And uh, you can always look at our schedule on the YouTube channel for these live classes. They usually go from 13.30 to 16 o'clock, Wednesday through to Saturday, and then we upload other HD videos during the week. So again, this class is focusing on the reading section and we will start this in just a moment uh, we are looking at reading passage three from exam number three now this is usually the most challenging passage in the academic test this will be the most scientific passage in most cases uh, don't panic don't freak out just stay calm throughout the whole reading no matter how daunting or challenging the task may seem focus on strategy focus on pacing yourself using good visualization first of all read the title here we have the title physalia physalis what does it mean eh, who knows i bet you if you asked 100 native english speakers 99 of them would have no idea what that means, okay? That's okay. Reading passage three is challenging and it's meant to uh, work in such a way that you figure out the meanings of words and ideas. Charlie Sen says it's a scientific name. Um, when they have these kinds of topics, they usually give you a picture to help you a little bit. And we do see that picture here as well. So when you look at the picture, what do you think it is? So what is this Physalia Physalis? What do you get from that picture? Okay, so for comprehension, today we're focusing on comprehension and reading fluency, speed in this class. Uh, for comprehension, number one is uh, use the picture to help you get an idea of the passage when it's available. Don't just um, jump through it and don't just ignore it. It's there to help you, okay? Uh, Erkin Selyev says it's a creature in the sea. Tito says it looks like some kind of a jellyfish, maybe something to eat. Ooh, I don't know about that one, Tito. Uh, Sammy says maybe it's some kind of a flower. Zemfedric seems to agree that it's some type of jellyfish. Okay. Um, so a jellyfish is a good first guess. Let me just zoom in on this picture here. So let's see. Can you see? You should be able to see that clearly. Yeah, let's darken it up a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, it does look like a jellyfish. Does it look like an ordinary jellyfish? Does it just look like any other uh, jellyfish out there? Okay. Somebody says, oh, it's a hydrozoan animal. That's nice. 
Fairy Zobek, it says some kind of medusa. Uh, does it just look like any ordinary jellyfish that you see in the ocean? Okay, good. So Boomy and Violet says, no, it's not an ordinary looking jellyfish. It's some kind of a special jellyfish. Um, yeah, sure. So uh, what's unusual about it? What is unusual about it? So uh, looking at it, the shape of it is kind of unusual. Uh, this kind of meaty, lower-looking body is unusual. And uh, when I see jellyfish, the living ones anyway, uh, they're usually round, and they're usually kind of like this. They have a radial shape, and they're in the ocean, not on the ocean, like this one, right? So there's definitely something a little bit special about this jellyfish. So keep that in mind, okay? Be critical. Don't just jump into difficult reading passages without using your brain. Your brain is the most amazing machine in the universe. That's what you need to use, okay? So before you jump into the passage for comprehension, take a moment to critically analyze the picture when you see it, okay? Let's make that jellyfish kind of a happy jellyfish for those of you who are panicking about this reading passage. Stay positive. All right. So uh, let's get into it a little bit more then. Okay, so tricky title, tricky picture. Hopefully not so tricky to get a good band score. Okay. All right. Let me brighten us up here a little bit, and then we'll get into it. Okay, so um, that's our jellyfish. Now, uh, before we read the passage, again, for comprehension, let's take a peek at the questions. So when you look at the questions, make sure to read questions that have information which is in the passage. Ignore questions that have information which is not in the passage. This is very important to help your comprehension, okay? So this one here, it says, cho choose no more than two words from the passage for each answer. Okay, clearly all of this will be in the passage, so let's read through it. Reading questions that have information which is in the passage will help you understand the passage. 27, the Portuguese man of wars acts as a both defense and attack mechanism. Hmm. Nomius has a something to the man of war's attack. Nomius is also a very competent something which helps keep it safe from the man of war. Although they initially look like a jellyfish, the man of war is really a something else. The role of the something is as a sexual organ. Nomius's ability to live around the poisonous something of the man of war is not fully understood. Okay, now I read these questions. Again, some interesting words, interesting ideas, but I do get a couple of ideas from reading this question set. So when you read questions, that contain information in the passage, okay? Do not read questions like true, false, not given, which are not in the passage. You can get further ideas about the passage, okay? So here, after I read these questions, I got a couple of ideas. So here, we're going to be learning about a couple of animals, it looks like. So the passage will have information on the behavior and interaction, attack, and defense of a couple of sea creatures. Okay, so hopefully most of you got that from reading these questions. Did, did some of you understand this from reading these questions? 
that we just read that this passage will have some information about the behavior and interaction, the attack, the defense of a couple of different sea creatures. Okay, I hope everybody got at least most of that. Okay. All right, let's keep going here. Complete each sentence with the correct ending, A to I below. Now, these ones are tricky because this part of the sentence is in the passage. But, of course, the choices, you have way more choices. You have uh, four, eight, nine choices. And you only have four questions. So, from the choices... Uh, five are incorrect, so we don't want to read those. Okay, I can see that many of you got that idea from the questions. That's good for your comprehension. Okay, so here we only want to read these parts of the question. The relationship between the two creatures is best described as, while the nomius is resistant to the venom, it. The nomius is swimming patterns. For the nomius, man of war also serves as. Okay, so a little bit more about the creatures, understanding that there's some kind of a venom or poison that's going on here, something about swimming. All right. Now, multiple choice. Again, the question is in the passage. The answers, only one is in the passage. Three are not. So we only read the question. The Nomius's main mechanism of defense, what does Nomius generally use to propel itself? All right. And finally, to make our day even more happy, we have some yes, no, not given. These we don't read because we don't know if they're in the passage or not, so we just save those for after the passage. All right, now you can see that so far we've come across numerous kind of scientific words, the names of these creatures like Nomius and uh, Physalia Physalis. Here's a tip for your reading fluency, okay? When you see these difficult words, don't worry about trying to pronounce them or reading them clearly. Okay, so this is for fluency. Number one, do not get stuck reading challenging scientific words during your IELTS exam. The same is true for names. Simply read through them. Okay, we'll practice that now as we get into reading the passage. Here we go, students. So let's read this together. We'll read aloud. And we'll continue talking about technique and comprehension. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Krishna, absolutely this uh, passage has a lot of different types of questions, and that can happen in the IELTS students. So in the IELTS, you can have a passage that can have four different question types, especially with passage three. So be very careful with that, okay? All right, here we go. So uh, Physalia Physalis, common name Portuguese man of war is a unique species of the class Cydrozoa. Several characteristics distinguish this species. The Physalia physalis is a free-floating communal polyp. Its powerful poison serves as a defense and attack for the species. One type of fish, however, has developed a high level of immunity to this toxin. The Nomius grombi is capable of withstanding injections of Physalia venom 10 times the normal strength of that which kills other fishes. Okay, now obviously here I'm reading a long paragraph. So I don't just want to keep reading and reading and reading. 
without knowing what I'm reading. So for comprehension, it's a good idea to stop and do a self check every few sentences. Practice this technique at home. Okay. So here I'm going to do a stop and I'm going to ask myself, what am I reading about? So, so far, what have I read about? What did I understand? Okay. Can anybody tell me what did you understand until now? So first couple of questions, what did you get from this? Okay. What did you get from this? And AJ, I'll answer your question in just a moment. Okay. Okay, Flower Sun said, I got something about a poisonous attack. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Beck John says, something about poison. Zen Frederick says, characteristics of the physalia. Okay. All right. Uh, Musafir says, ocean organisms that live and interface between water and air. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And so you want to check. And if you're not sure, you want to go back and read again. So here there is Physalia physalis, Portuguese man of war. So it's one animal. Okay. This is the animal that we saw with that interesting shape. Okay. It's a unique species of the class Hydrozoa. And then it says it's a free floating communal polyp. Okay, if I don't know this word, I'm going to underline it and check it. A polyp belongs to the same family as jellyfish, but it's not a jellyfish. And it has a powerful poison. Okay, so I'm visualizing this. And I can see the powerful poison of this uh, creature. Okay, so there we go. That's my skull and crossbones. I don't know if that's going to be visible for you here. All right. And of course, I'm showing you a way to comprehend here as well. So you're visualizing this, okay? And then it says one type of fish, however. Oh, suddenly there's a fish. Hoo -hoo, okay, so here's my fish. All right. Uh, has developed a high level of immunity to this toxin. Toxin, what is that? Maybe it's another way to say poison. The Nombius grombi, okay, I can guess that this is the name of the fish, is capable of withstanding injections of Physalia venom 10 times the normal strength of that which kills other fish. So this fish is a strong fish. Okay, it's a little arm on that fish there. And to make it even more special, this fish is me, okay? Remember what I said in previous classes, always include yourself in the visualization. Okay. So here, this fish is able to withstand this animal's poison. Okay. Now I understand it. Students, especially with the introduction, it's very important that you understand what's going on. If you read the introductory paragraph and you have no idea what's happening, you have to stop and think, okay, I have to improve my vocabulary here. I have to check some words in the dictionary. You can't just keep reading. All right. The introduction is absolutely key to understanding the passage and answering the questions. All right. Okay. So visualize practice check your understanding. All right. This is a really important tip. And of course, if, uh, if you're doing this at home when you're practicing. Okay. So this is for comprehension. Okay. If you do not understand the introductory paragraph, Stop reading and start using a dictionary. Okay, of course, this is for home practice. All right. In the official exam, you have to keep going. And what I would do if you're in the official exam, what do you think? 
Let's see how many of you have been uh, practicing some of that great logic and so forth. Uh, what could you do if you are completely lost in the introduction? What do you think might be an interesting and useful strategy to help you before you read the body paragraphs? Can anybody uh, guess what's in my mind? So another tip, okay, in the official exam, if you do not understand the introduction, you can do what? Okay, let's say that you've read it, you've read it twice or you've skimmed over it again, what could you do? Rajvir says, maybe try to identify the thesis. Yeah, that could help. Okay, so you can read it again. Sure. You can A, read it again. B, identify the thesis. And there's another kind of a trick that you could do that might help. No guarantees, but it could help. Don't just leave it and go ahead. Check this out. I, and this might not, you might not have, here we go. Um, read the conclusion. So read the conclusion. Read the very last paragraph. Because not always, but in many situations, the conclusion, at least partly, will be a paraphrase and a reflection of the introduction. So read the introduction. You kind of confused or lost. Okay, read the conclusion and then read the body paragraphs. Okay, does that make sense? How that might help you to understand? Don't read the body paragraphs because those will be more details and you'll just get more lost. Okay. So the conclusion can help you. It can hint at the understanding of the paragraph. So that's another one for your comprehension. All right. Okay, students. So let's keep going here. All right, you got it. Good. Okay, so here we go. Um, from here. Due to this resistance to the venom, again, uh, students, read with me. This is a reading class. Okay, so I'm not just reading for you. Read with me. Uh, due to this resistance to the venom and exceptional swimming, the two organisms have evolved to form a commensal relationship with one another. Even though we apply the term commensalism to the symbiosis between these two animals, the nature of interaction is not exactly fitting the term. As defined by Campbell and Reese, commensalism is when one organism receives benefits while neither harming nor helping the other in any significant way. By looking closely at the behavior, physiology, and symbiosis between Physalia physalis and Nambias gromi, we find out the reason for this misleading terminology. Okay, so now... It's talking about this relationship between these two people and, or these two animals and questioning this relationship. All right. Okay, let's keep going here, students. So again, just read through these difficult to uh, understand words. And when you're practicing fluency at home, just for fun, what you can do sometimes is push yourself to read faster than you can, faster than you've ever read before. So here, what I'm suggesting to you is use the same trick that runners use when they're training for the Olympics and the biggest race of their lives. They're pushing themselves to run faster than ever before. The reason why is because to increase the speed, you have to push your limits, okay? So here's another tip for fluency in your reading, in your own language, or in English, okay? In order to read faster in English or your own language,
push your limits. Push to read faster than ever before. It's okay to fail, to fumble. and to sound funny okay uh everybody's probably seen some videos of um people running hurdles now this is just for fluency understanding so nick Ham says yes but it creates less understanding that's right nick Ham. but in this case you're practicing and we're not focusing on comprehension but we're focusing on fluency to focus on comprehension, you have to read slowly, Nighame. That's right. So everybody's seen those races where people run hurdles. Hurdles are those um, things that people jump over. Okay. And I'm sure many of us have seen those uh, videos where uh, the runners, they fall when they jump over those hurdles. And it looks terrible, but some of us can't help but laugh and Kind of like, oh, look at that guy. Um, well, that's because they're pushing their limits. They're pushing to run faster than, than ever before. And that happens, and that happens with the tongue as well when we're reading really quickly. But that's okay. It's okay to do that, and it's okay to fumble. And I'm going to um, maybe sound funny, but I'm going to show you this just for this short body paragraph, okay? So... Push yourself to read faster. The problem for many students is they get comfortable at a reading speed and then they just keep at that reading speed, okay? Uh, but you shouldn't do that. You should push yourself. So here we go. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Um, make sure to have a glass of water when you're doing this kind of exercise. It definitely helps. Now remember, students, with this, we're not focusing on comprehension. We're just focusing on pushing our reading speed, okay? And you can do this aloud and internally in your mind, okay? So the physiology of Physalis is unique. At a first glance, they appear to be jellyfish, but the Portuguese man of war is actually a polyp community of polyps belonging to the order of Siphonora, which gets a common name from the resemblance of an old Portuguese man of warship. The man of warship has gas field, blue to pink, translucent body called the man of war, and it's a single polyp. The crest-like metaphor, which may attain a length of 20 centimeters, acts as a sail line in the colony. It's 45 centimeters of wind. Polyps connect tentacles, which are located at the ventral surface of the float. There are three types of specialized polyps, actinozoids, that act to catch prey with poisonous sin, called the ganozoids, to reproduce, and gastrozoids that digest the food like a stomach for the fishing tentacles, sometimes as long as 50 meters hang down like a drift net, combining the water for prey. Okay, so <laughs> I got 50% of the words correct, I think. Okay, um, but that's fine. Uh, make sure you get some of the words correct, so it shouldn't just be like a blah, 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 okay? Uh, you should have about a 50% accuracy. Um, Elena is like, what is that? Um, it's just pushing my reading speed. Obviously, I didn't wake up this morning reading at that speed, okay? And by the way, when you practice this, you'll eventually realize that you can read entire sentences uh, at one time. Okay, Boomi says, I'm going to do that today. Uh, do it every day, students. So practice this every day, uh, even just 10 minutes, and uh, push your speed. Okay, so one really good way to improve your reading is focus on comprehension, focus on fluency, and then put the two together. And that's what I'm showing you today with this passage, okay? So focusing on comprehension, focusing on fluency, and then putting the two together, all right? And now notice that these really tricky words like gonozoid and nematocysts, I just kind of fumbled through them. I don't use these words every day, so I just, blah, 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 gonozoids, okay? I don't really get stuck on those. All right, but of course here, we want to answer some questions as well. So we're going to read this one more time in a calm collected way so that we can uh, understand the paragraph also. Okay, so going back to fluency. Okay, so read faster, push your limits. Uh, about 50% of the words should be comprehensible. Okay, so that's what you're focusing on when you're doing that. Um, 
do this daily for 10 minutes a day for two weeks and suddenly you will realize that you are reading 10% faster. Okay, so that will help you. All right, here we go. So uh, let's read this uh, hey, one more time. Now this time we're going to uh, focus on understanding this, okay? All right. So here we go. The physiology of physalis, physial, physalis is unique. At first glance, they appear to be jellyfish, but the Portuguese man-of-war is actually a polyp or community of polyps be belonging to the order Siphonophora, which gets its common name from its resemblance to an old Portuguese warship. Ooh, yeah, it looks like a ship for sure. The man o' war floats with a gas filled blue to pink translucent body called a pneumatophore, part of a single polyp. This crest like pneumatophore, which may attain a length of 20 centimeters, acts as a sail and is aligned so that the colony sails at 45 degrees to the wind direction. Polyps connect tentacles, which are located on the ventral surface of the float. There are three types of specialized polyps. Dactylozoids that find and catch prey with poisonous stingers called nematocysts, gonozoids that reproduce, and gastrozoids that digest the food like a stomach. These fishing tentacles, sometimes as long as 50 meters, hang down like a drift net, combing the water for prey. Okay, so here I'm reading about this interesting animal or animals that live together and create this uh, unique type of polyp or jellyfish. And uh, it's actually a group of animals. So it's not just one animal, but it's a group of animals that are stuck together, living together. One animal creates the bubble that floats. Another one hangs down to catch the fish. And another one uses... Uh, is used for reproduction and digesting food. So, okay, that makes sense. All right, let's keep reading. So our goal now is to read the passage and to answer some questions. Okay, students, so here we go. Let's keep reading. Okay. All right. Uh, Nomvius gromai are tropical fish belonging to the ray fin fishes of the class Osteochystes. The fins supported by long flexible rays are modified for maneuvering, defense, and other functions. The length of this fish at maturity is about eight centimeters. Okay, so it's tiny. The nature of the ability of the nomius to live among the venomous tentacles of the physalia has been likened to that of the relationship between sea anemones and anemone fishes. This immunity is not yet fully understood. Okay, so now we're getting into this interesting little fish that lives together with this jellyfish, all right? Okay, let's keep going. I see a couple of people thanking me for doing these lessons. You're very welcome, absolutely. We're the happiest when we see people succeed on the IELTS, get into school and immigrate to countries. That makes us super happy. So work hard, students. All right. Let's keep reading. The relationship between physalia and nomius is arguably harmful to both organisms. They mutually benefit from one another, but at the same time, the symbiosis can be quite damaging to both creatures. In this sense, the relationship could be better defined as one of mutualism and parasitism. In mutualism, both organisms benefit. In parasitism, one organism benefits at the expense of the host. What is this about? Again, the relationship between the fish and the jellyfish. What's the relationship? Well, it's both good and bad. 
In mutualism, they help each other. In parasitism, they hurt each other. Okay? It's kind of like husband and wife, love and hate, relationship, brother and sister. Sometimes we get along, sometimes we don't. Mutualism, parasitism. Again, visualize. Okay, visualize. All right? Okay, uh, here we go. Let's continue on. When the nomius is weak, it may no longer be able to withstand the venom of the nematocysts. In one study, a freshly expired nomius was offered to the physalia. The carcass was immediately stung, taken hold of by a dactylozoid, and brought up to the gastrozoids. The nomius, although resilient to the toxin, is not 100% immune. The same study the live nomias began to swim more erratically and move towards the carcass as the gastrozoids formed their characteristic bag and began to digest the fish. The live nomias was then caught on the left side by one of the largest dactylozoids. This behavior clearly indicates how the symbiosis may deviate from the definition provided by commensalism. Okay. So here it's saying that, well, the fish is skillful, but not 100% safe from this Portuguese man of war. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so here I'm just doing some practice with you. Follow with me, read with me. Okay, on the other hand, the Nombius has two distinct gains from its innate behavior with Physalia. As an experiment demonstrated, upon introduction, the nomius initially swam near the surface and around the physalia in a large circular pattern in both clockwise and counterclockwise directions. Okay, so swimming this way around this Portuguese man of war and this way. Okay, this action protects the fish from attack. Most predatory fishes of Nombius therefore avoid the man of war or sustain serious injury and often death. Second, the Physalia provides a food source for the Nombius. In the mentioned experiment, about 15 minutes after release, the Nombius swam closer to the Physalia, paused as if inspecting it, and then began to nip at the edges of the gonozoids. The physalia is able to regenerate the tentacles, and so this ingestion is rarely fatal to the organism. Okay, so the fish can actually eat this jellyfish in certain parts as well. So this is that love-hate relationship, okay? All right. Let's keep going. Nombius's capacity to survive near the poisonous tentacles of the man of war is only partly due to the resilience of the toxin. The main reason for this skill is certain swimming behaviors. Instead of developing protective mucus, the fish depends on its swimming abilities as its main mechanism of defense while living in the venomous discharge of the physalia. The Nombius fish can maneuver with precision to avoid stinging nematocysts. This is the case whether the physalia is stationary or in motion. Rayfin fishes have a physiology which enables maneuverability. The fish displays relative ease in maintaining a safe distance from the dactylozoids even with absurd sharp changes in direction. Nombius specimens use the pectoral fins for propulsion, while the pelvic fins are spread like a fan. The caudal fin is apparently used for only short, fast darts. This swimming behavior appears to be well suited for existence with physalia. So, so far, again, I stop and I check and I go, okay, what am I really reading here? I'm reading about the fish's ability to swim and maneuver to protect itself from the jellyfish. I have to make sure that I understand this before I continue reading or I should read it again, okay? All right. 
So this swimming behavior appears to be well suited for existence with physalia. It is therefore apparent that rather than developing an ability to inhibit the discharge of physalia nematocysts or prevent them from stinging, Nomius uses its swimming ability as its primary means of defense while living in the venomous drift net of physalia. Taking into consideration all of the interactions involved in the symbiotic relationship of these two organisms, the appropriate term to assign is difficult. Perhaps we can say marriage. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The facts state that commensalism of these two aquatic creatures is one which incorporates beneficial as well as harmful factors depending on the circumstance. It is this alternation of prey-predator roles of Physalia and Nombius that creates a definitive difficulty. Perhaps the best term we can apply for the moment is that of commensalism, given that both animals receive some benefit at varying times during the relationship. Okay. All right, so we read it. Hopefully we understood most of it. Now... If you didn't understand everything, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It's passage three. It's challenging. Okay, be ready for these. Let's take a look at the questions and solve them together. Okay. So here we go. Number 27. The Portuguese man of war's something acts as both a defense and attack mechanism. Okay, so the Portuguese man of war's something acts as both a defense and attack mechanism. Uh, can anybody tell me um, what that could be? Okay, Bumi says maybe tentacles. Bekjan says I think poison is better. Rajvir says venom. Okay, um, remember students that there, this creature has several types of tentacles. And it's only one specific tentacle that's poisonous. So poison is the better word, okay? So poison. And in this case, because the passage mentions the synonyms, they will accept the synonyms. So venom or toxin, okay? Because the passage mentions all three of these, they will take any one of these three answers, Okay, but they won't take tentacles. Okay. Yeah, Napita, you can see lots of these lessons on our channel and on our websites. Okay, it's super cool that you like the lesson. So poison, toxin, or venom, those are synonyms, and they'll take any one because all three are mentioned in the passage. Okay, so good. Uh, number 28, Nomius, which is the fish, of course, has a something to the Man of War's attack. What's the correct answer for 28? Can anybody remember? And again, if you visualize this, you should be able to have a pretty good idea or a pretty good guess. Okay, Rajvir says resilience, and Zen Fedrick says resistance. Yeah, absolutely. Both of those are okay. So resilience and resistance are both okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, remember it even says how much more resistance than other fish. Anybody remember? Let's see who is really paying attention to this reading. How much more resistant is the Nombius to the Man of War's attack than other fish? It actually gives us the number for that. Sammy says 10 times. No, not 10. It's more than 10. It was 100 times, 100. Good guess on the 10, but multiply it by another 10 and you have the right number. It's 100 times, right? Remember that uh, part? We were, it was up here, right at the very, very beginning. Somewhere I remember it because I visualized how really strong uh, must be. Okay. Oh, sorry, my mistake. You did a better job than I did. <laughs> no, Bennett, sorry, everybody else is right. I'm wrong. <laughs> 
You guys are like, wasn't it 10? I saw 10. No, you're right. Everybody, you're right. You're right. I'm wrong. I admit it. Um, I was over-visualizing. Uh, it's 10 times. I just read it. Here we go. Where is it? Uh, there it is. Fizalia Venom, 10 times the norm, the uh, strength of that which kills other fishes. 10 times. 10 times. You're right. You're right. I'm wrong. 10 times. Good job. All right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Good job visualizing. Okay, uh, here we go. Number 29, anomious is also a very competent something which helps keep it safe from the man of war. Uh, what is the missing word there? That should be a fairly easy one. That should be a fairly easy one. Of course everybody makes mistakes, Maksud. Of course everybody makes mistakes. So, um, Nomius is also a very competent something. What is it? Yeah, very competent swimmer. Not very competent fish, or Ken, that would mean that the fish is smart. Swimmer, swimmer. Very competent swimmer. Which helps keep it safe, right? It's a swimmer. Very competent swimmer. It's a very good swimmer. Monomious. Swims well. All right. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, notice two students, and this is kind of interesting, that sometimes when a passage seems like it's really difficult, the topic and the ideas, um, the questions aren't necessarily that bad. Okay? So the questions aren't going to be quite as scientific as the passage. Okay? So keep that in mind. So the IELTS is still not a... Uh, third year university biology exam, okay? When you get into university and you see a passage like this, uh, you can bet that your test will have much more challenging questions, like what's the logic for uh, the naming of the relationship between the nombius and the physalia? So it'll be questions more like that. Write two sentences, Okay, so please keep in mind, students, that uh, college university exams can be much more challenging. Okay, these ones aren't, so don't panic about the questions. Okay, even though the passage might look scary, the questions aren't as bad. Okay, all right, um, so number 30. Although they initially look like a jellyfish, the man of war is really a what? That's an interesting, fun question. So, mm, what is that man of war if it's not a jellyfish? Again, that's something coming from the beginning, and EC Music says, it's a polyp. Yeah, polyp. Very good. Now, the reason why this is uh, so interesting, students, is because polyps usually grow on the bottom of the ocean, and they look like this. And maybe you've seen these, uh, especially if you're living in a country where you have access to the ocean or the sea, you've probably seen these creatures. They're quite common, just like jellyfish around the world, and they feed, so they wait for algae, and they feed like this, and these are called polyps. Okay, now the uh, Portuguese man-o-war is a really interesting polyp, and now it'll all make sense, which is basically inverted. So it's like taking these polyps and then turning them upside down like this, okay? With this one very special polyp that creates this air sac. That's why it's floating on top of the ocean. It is explained in the passage. So does that make sense now? That this Portuguese man of war is like an inverted polyp. It's like an upside down polyp, okay? All right, so now that makes sense. Why is that not a jellyfish? And it's not in the ocean, it's on top of the ocean, okay? All right, a little bit of science in there for us as well. So yeah, so number 30, it's really a polyp. It's really a polyp, it's not a jellyfish. Okay, the role of the something is as a sexual organ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is one part of the fish this is going to be a technical word. I know that one paragraph is talking about the different parts 
of this animal. So I'm going to go back to that part. I think that was the part that I was actually reading super fast, if everybody remembers. Okay, and here we can see it. So the gonozooids that reproduce. Yeah, Erkin, good. So Erkin got it. Erkin was like, it was something with the gonozoids. Uh, now, careful with the spelling of this word. It's gonozoids. So it's a double O, okay, gonozoid. Uh, make sure to go back and check the spelling for words like that. Now, notice how it doesn't say sexual organ, but it says reproduce. So they do paraphrase that, okay? All right. I see a couple students have some questions that are off topic, which is okay. Uh, just send me an email on that, students, okay? You can always send me an email. So uh, here it's gonozoid is as a sexual organ, okay? Now it's singular, not s, because the is, okay? All right, number 32. Namius's ability to live around the poisonous something of the man of war is not fully understood. Uh, what do you think is the word that goes in there? You can probably guess that one without looking. Okay, so Namius's ability to live around the poisonous something of the man of war is not fully understood. Michael Fan says, I'm pretty sure that one's tentacles. Komal Preet. Kaur agrees, and I agree as well. Tentacles. Abhishek agrees as well. Tentacles. Okay. Uh, tentacles. If you're not sure what a tentacle is, uh, tentacles are those kind of funky uh, appendages, appendages that move around without bones, right? So if you uh, think of an octopus, then uh, you will uh, think of those uh, eight beautiful tentacles as well. Ooh. Okay. Um, this one's missing a few. Uh, so these are the tentacles, tentacles of these animals. Okay. Tentacles. Good for those of you who got it. Yeah. So the fish is able to swim around those tentacles. All right. Good news and bad news, students. Good news. I think all of you did a great job and you learned some good tips, strict, uh, tricks and strategies to improve your band scores that we talked about for comprehension and fluency. Uh, bad news is we have run out of time. So if you'd like to uh, complete the rest of these, uh, here are the questions. I can uh, post the answer key on the YouTube um, community board later. So I'll post the answer keys there. Okay, on our YouTube community board. Here are the next four questions. Here are the choices. You can look at this video again and just go to the questions here at the end of the video. The video will be on this channel after it processes in about an hour. Okay, here are the multiple choice questions. And uh, last but not least, here are the yes, no, uh, not given questions. So you can go back to these, pause the video, answer them, reread again, okay? Uh, students, if you like these lessons, you want to see some uh, HD lessons without ads, uh, properly organized and so forth, uh, definitely check us out on our websites and join our premium packages. Uh, aehelp.com for academic health. There's six original practice exams there. We're adding four more this year. And uh, for gialtshelp.com, it's uh, the general alts. Check us out there. Over 100 hours of video lessons on those. And also fully interactive course and also app supported. So you're very, very welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, participating, for watching. I hope everybody continues to have a safe and healthy rest of your day. I will be back uh, tomorrow with uh, task one and task two, maybe, I think. So, but I'll be here tomorrow for more IELTS. Either way, bye for now. Much love to all of you from Budapest.